Questions, if you have any questions. Uh, Dr. Vidhavi, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy that you are able to speak to us. Uh, and, uh, you know, so your, the work that you're doing in Uganda is really inspiring because mm -hmm. you are going there as, uh, as a real pioneer and trying to uh, see the local situation and trying to adjust to the local situation, bringing Buddhism to the Ugandans in a peaceful way. So, uh, as you say, people go, people come to Buddhist temple, they're afraid to step inside <laughs> because of all the movies that they have seen and a lot of misconception. So, uh, yes. you have to teach them from outside the temple. So, you were mentioning that you had some novice monks. Are that uh, novice monks just for a short period of time that they come in for Buddhist training, like two weeks or one month, and then after that, they go back to their lay life? Is, yes. uh, is that what the, the Buddhist monks are? The, novice, the novices? Yes, uh, yes. Actually, in the beginning, that's what I had. Uh, but when it came to COVID, we had to discontinue the program. So what I did this time is actually to, uh, even the one we, we, whom we had, we decided to, uh, all of them to, uh, to disrupt because they were temporary, temporary novices. So now the one you are seeing in white, they are anagalicals, uh, which means Yes, those ones are going to, uh, to be permanent now. They are not going to go back to their school because this was our problem. Every time we would tr train them, eh, I, when I met you, I think we met in Malaysia, I told you that uh, we have a novice program uh, uh, for the, during the school holidays. This was a big challenge because uh, once they disrupt, they go back and they learn bad habits. But now we are building a school so that once, once we ordain them in May, they don't have to work. They will have to attend our school. <laughs> so then when they come from school, they can now learn Buddhism. So now that they will not go to their parents, they are not going to go to their teachers. This is the first time to do this program. Before I was doing it for holiday, they come and they stay for us with, uh, after school holidays. Then they go back and then by the time they come back, they start from scratch. <laughs> so now there's going to be continuous. Yes, that's what I'm doing at the moment. Okay, all right. Very, very interesting. <laughs> so you have 12 of them. Uh, yes. Bante, you got 12 yes. of them and they're now Anagarikas. Yes, uh, now. Yes, and, and they come in the morning and meditate. They know how to chant the three sutras, Ratana Sutta, Metta Sutta, and, the, and Mangala Sutta. And then uh, when it comes to Visak Day this year, in May, they, they are going to then permanently, and their parents have given these children. They, they have even written a letter that we have given you the children. Oh. <laughs> Actually, they have given me even more. <laughs> Before they have they didn't write letters, they were just coming here and have a good time. And at the temple, they eat well. <laughs> well and they, after school, then they go back home. But now they have written a letter. I've given my child to the in as a book. Actually, they've given me more into the budget. We cannot have all what I've given. But still, your child until they become 10. So now we have other children, no, more than 12, but still with their parents. But we have the late, uh, actually minimum 10. Then they, 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 we bring them to the temple. So this is part of the mission. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Victor V. I, I know you've inspired me a lot. Whenever I met in Thailand and you told me, yeah, this is a good program. You even, you even gave me some idea. I remember you say, you know, that, why don't you do a program whereby you get a sponsor of one novice? You, I remember th that was your idea, Dr. Uh, Victor. <laughs> I remember <laughs> you gave me that idea. Thank you very much. You inspired me a lot, actually. You inspired me a lot. Yes. I think you have made tremendous you progress, Bante. From your mobile temple, now you have a nice temple. <laughs> That's a big progress, and you also have a Sima Hall. That is fantastic. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Bobby, do we have questions coming in? 
Uh, not yet. Still waiting for questions. <laughs> I think the others are just. Uh, <laughs> it is. It is. It is quite uh, remarkable. But um, uh, so you are basically Bante. You're just mm. basically at, at the Antibi area. Antibi, but not. Uh, how is uh, the outreach to come yes. and all that? That's much later. Actually, uh, outreach to Kampala, I like to do it later on because the land is very expensive. But uh, I'm, pre I'm preparing for the outreach. Mm. After I ordain these monks, uh, I, I like now to focus uh, on building branches. Yeah, branches. So we have got some land scattered in Uganda, uh, about four lands, like four properties eh, that over time they have donated to us. Uh, some of them we bought for the farm because when you have uh, 12 children, they eat uh, food and uh, if you buy it, <laughs> so it will be very expensive. So we are creating a, a farm where we can grow food. Uh, oh. So then uh, we have about four places where we can start new centers. But um, um, now there's no structures in those lands uh, because the, all my energy now focusing to build the, the, the monks, the novice monks. But maybe down the road, maybe one or two years, we'll start spreading out to other uh, other regions like Kampala, the capital, because Entebbe is not far from Kampala, but still we, we need our presence in the capital. But Uganda is mainly uh, And Christian, also other places. Correct? The good news is that people, uh, they have, uh, uh, sorry? Sorry? The, uh, the, uh, the, the main- What uh, I was saying that, Yes. Yes, Bante, please carry on. Yes. Yes, uh, I missed your point. Uh, uh, I didn't hear you. Can you say? Yes. Uh, I was I was uh, what is the main religion for the uh, Ugandans? Is it Christianity? Christianity. The main religion is, religion is Christianity. Yes. Yes. But what I'm saying, Saying that uh, I was trying to tell you that uh, uh, once they see the monks so then so it will attract more children, more children, more children. So once I feel stability in the building the children, that's when I'm start going to I will start to expand more centers so that we have a center in Kampala and other places where they have offered us land. And there's some places we bought the land ourselves. So we need to put a Ugandan Buddhist standard branch. So, but I haven't done that because I want, I don't want to spread myself too thin. Hmm. So I want to really focus on building the people, really, really building the people in the next few years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, but I, I've been to your center. It's beautiful. I, I went to your center. <laughs> 10 years ago, I got to talk to your center. It's very beautiful. I also, I'm, in, I'm inspired. I was inspired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Bante. <laughs> and also, and also with your skills, you made a good presentation in the, in, 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 in Thailand. In, are you tired? That presentation. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you made that presentation. It's still, uh, uh, I, I'm thinking about it, how to follow your, 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 your skills that, that you, 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 you mentioned in that presentation for, for spreading diamonds. It's very important. Yes. I'll check, I'll check my emails. So how is the situation in Malaysia the, uh, with the COVID? Is the vaccine there already? Vaccine? Uh, the, uh, the cases are, have stabilized and coming down. And uh, mm -hmm. it is still a restricted movement for Malaysians. Mm -hmm. And uh, the vaccine has come, uh, but mm. uh, many people do not want to sign up for the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> because there is a lot of news about the vaccine, so people are not signing up. But yes. one of the advantage of COVID-19 for us uh, at the BGF is that we have gone mm. online. And uh, because we have gone online, it becomes a new way of reaching out. And means for some yes. of our programs, we have people in different countries participating yes. in the programs that we run. For instance, the matter yes. that I lead every Wednesday uh, it, this has been right. going on for 23 years now, but because of the lockdown, right. uh, we have gone online. And now I have about uh, people from six countries joining joining me on Meta on every Wednesday night, which is quite fantastic. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, <laughs> so, uh, 
Yes, and also we have also started online Buddhist uh, programs yeah. online. Uh, one mm -hmm. is through Zoom classes, and the other mm -hmm. one is through correspondence course. We started mm -hmm. last year with something mm -hmm. like 45 uh, participants. Now the mm -hmm. registration have gone to 1,500 people. Wow! Wow! That's and there are amazing. people who are translating, who have volunteered to translate into Bahasa Indonesian. Yes. In Tamil, and then there are also other other countries as well coming. Participants wants to translate the materials so that uh, yes. it becomes accessible to their participants. So this is this suddenly is a discovery for us. <laughs> <laughs> so a disadvantage wow. becomes an opportunity for us. <laughs> now that reminds me of the Chinese word of, of, of crisis. crisis. Yes, <laughs> one is the Chinese, another one's opportunity. Yeah, right. <laughs> definitely. It's That's quite exactly incredible. quite incredible. I'm so happy about that. Actually. I'm yes, so and happy. We have a good team of people like, you know, Alex is handling the uh, the transmission tonight. He and a few others. Yes. We have good people. And because of that, we can actually go online. And even the WESA program is done yes. online. And the end of the year, the whole program is done online by us. So it looks wow. like a TV program, but it is it is done live and together with uh, snippets of a uh, video, so we can actually run mm. the whole program online. So this is something that we are forced to do because of the yes. lockdown. We cannot go to the center, so we do it from our own houses. <laughs> <laughs> and so the whole way, thing put together as a program. <laughs> so there is this, there's a blessing there actually because actually you can reach more people there. Really, yes, right. you can meet. Yes. Yes. And we also I discovered think... that this is something that we can do. We have the skills to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Wow. I'm so happy to hear that. Actually, that's what I should do. I I, I should start teaching here on, uh, on 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 Zoom. I should give start giving talks here. Actually, yes, yes because many people have been asking me to do that. Yes. yes. The only good. yes, the only drawback here, the internet is still poor. Yeah. But I probably I need to invest more into internet. The, it's they are the strong one, um, but uh, it's very expensive. We have two companies which are very yeah. But uh, uh, I, when I was teaching online in USA, it was a retreat that I was teaching. So we we, we actually subscribed for a few days but, so that we can live stream. But otherwise, general general internet is very poor here. But for me, my, my brother, I can tell you the. The, there is, there's been a challenge, but the opportunity for me is that I don't travel as I used to travel to teach in other countries. Then I can I can attract those twelve novices. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. when I'm traveling, <laughs> when I'm traveling, then nobody to teach them here. So that's I think right. for me that 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 has been the opportunity basically in this one year I've stayed here. This is the longest I've ever stayed in Uganda. Yes. Okay. Since I left. Uganda. Bante, there's a uh, Bante. So anyway, I'm so happy to do. Bante, we have three, three, we have three questions coming with you and reconnect with all of you. So if there's any question, any question, any question. Yeah, Bante, we have three mm -hmm. questions coming in. Uh, there's a question from sister from Singapore, uh, so saying, can... uh, yes. Yeah, Bante, thank yes. you for the sharing of the great news of the Anagarikas and high ordinations in May. We are excited to hear the updates. We would like to know the current progress of your kuti and building of the monad for monastics and lay people in Uganda Buddhist Center. Kindly share. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Right. So this is uh, something that uh, uh, the progress is going on. We are building now. Uh, a place where they're going to stay, 12 of them. Uh, so it's supposed to, uh, to finish by end of May. End of May 1st, we, we're supposed to, to finish it. And uh, we, we, we do the opening ceremony and we ordain the, those boys there. But of course, uh, once these 12 children have been ordained, uh, we have to bring other Nagarikas. So the, the, it's a system. Once the 12 ordained, then we have to attract another 12 so that will be 12 anagarika and 12 novice monks so that building accommodation uh, is actually in progress concentration uh, 
con construction is still in progress. It's supposed to be uh, finished in May, but uh, then uh, it's continuing uh, because of uh, national elections. Uh, then there's the Christmas holidays and uh, this and that. There's so many uh, delays in that project, but uh, we extend them by 1st May. They should be finished 12 rooms uh, where we can stay at the 12 monks and train there. So in future progress is every year we should admit 12 and then that means we should add another floor. We should under, keep on adding, 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 adding until we reach the minimum uh, of 60 monks, which are going to be sent around Africa. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just like the Buddha, I'm just following the footsteps of the Buddha. Whether there will be other hands at that time or not, but let me have 60. So that means we can have uh, the, uh, 12 monks per year and then we can have another floor for 12, 12, 12 that about five floors and to be to be to be done very well yes uh, then uh, of course the school we, where they go because they have to continue on their studies otherwise they, their parents they will be they will be doubting us why we stop them from studying so that's why we create a buddhist school so they can study buddhism and national curricula so that will even attract more parents to send us more children because they are learning something. And then uh, that's another thing where we are, we are starting actually uh, with the excavation. Uh, so then uh, there's some donation we got uh, to kickstart the school, Buddhist school. Yes, then there is a, the people are going to train the school, the, the, the children. We, we want to attract foreign monks because we don't have enough monks. Uh, like you need four monks to ordain. So I like to invite four monks to stay. So we are building, uh, uh, we are building that uh, uh, where uh, the, uh, monks, senior monks can stay. That's also construction in progress, but uh, still we need more funds to construct a place where senior monks can stay. Yes, that's really important because one monk or two cannot actually ordain monk, monks. Otherwise I have to fly them all to, to, to Asia. <laughs> So I fly all this move to Asia, to, then I come back to Uganda. So the progress, the program is to have a place where senior monks can stay, and now uh, maybe six senior monks at the minimum, and then we, they can even stay here for three months, six months, and they can train the novice monks. Yes. So that's a, the, 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 the status of the construction here going on here. So, so many things have been going on here uh, during COVID. And uh, yes, this is work in progress. Thank you very much for the person, um, my brother and sister who is in Singapore has asked this question. Yeah, so my uh, open invitation to you is even to, uh, uh, to Victor V. <laughs> uh, I'd like to invite you to Uganda and see if we are safe, what we are doing here. Once the vaccine is done, yeah, so even uh, people in Singapore, you're welcome and see what I'm doing here. Yes, thank you very much for asking the question. Uh, Bante, another question. How do you overcome the language problem as most of the texts are in English? Uh, I think uh, for, for the children, they know English because this was an English country. Uh, the, uh, people learn English uh, when they're still children. It's like Malaysia, you know. It was a mm -hmm. Commonwealth country. And uh, people have no language barrier, but of course we get some children from other uh, areas. Who have not had a good education primary education and their english is not good that's why i'm preparing a school so that we have good english teachers mm. so that they can learn english so that they can learn the text buddhist text so uh, i think that uh, language uh, is not a, a big big issue but uh, we, we is something that we can overcome always provide education that's how we do provide education otherwise this uh, all children here speak english there's no problem because the text are in english so they, what we have to do is to teach them more Pali. Yeah, so they are learning Pali by listening to us. But as far as the uh, English, they, they learn, no problem. Okay, Th thanks Bante. Okay. Bante, can you thanks, share with us yes. how you inspired by the Buddha Dhamma since you're quite outside the Buddhist scope? <laughs> but I see here somebody say, uh, I see that on a chat, Bante, this dictator, welcome to the talk. Bante, maybe you can try to off the video. Oh, you used to send me the text. <laughs> I've just seen them. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> sorry, I opened them and then uh, I I was not reading them, you know. Sorry to delay to read. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry that the the, the the video did come. I don't know whether how is the outcome, but the video because we we have a very poor internet. Okay, then another one: how to make donation to your center. I see that one. Bante, there is a question of how you. Over you, you have already answered that. The language. You've already answered that, Bhante. Okay. okay, yeah, I've answered that question. How yeah. did I get inspired for? I, I didn't tell you how I got inspired. Yes. In, in Buddhism is I was born as a Roman Catholic, and I went to uh, when I, I went I was in pre-university. That means the A levels before I got to the university. The, 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 uh, and at this year, I saw monks from Thailand. They had come to study a master's degree uh, to improve their English. So they're doing a master's degree in English. So when I saw them, they looked like my brothers. So they were so kind and peaceful. They are really embodying the, what you call the... the, the, the the Buddha's teaching, they are generous and and happy. And so then I, 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 I was walking with them every time they go, they invite me to eat food, the temple. They're the one who invited me to the temple. So that's how I, I got inspired, actually, Buddhism. And slowly by slowly, I, in 1994, I started meditating uh, formally in a retreat in, in the Toshita Monastery in Dharamsala, where the Dalai Lama stays. So I, I, I like 12 days, I did a crash course in Buddhism. And I'm telling you, life has never been the same. So I, I, I became a Buddhist, and that's how I got inspired in Buddhism. That's how, by going to India and that. Otherwise, in Uganda, there was no Buddhist. There's no Buddhist monk, there's no Buddhist temple. Ah, thank you, so Bhante. Then, uh, and I meditate and I feel there's a difference in my life. I'm more peaceful. I met different monks. Yeah, so that's how I got interested. Any question I didn't answer? Yeah, thank you, Bante. There's a question on the any Bodhi tree planted at the Anabody? temple. Any Bodhi tree planted at your temple. And uh, yeah. how do you how do you assimilate the Dhamma with yeah. local culture? like rites and rituals. Do you share Jataka stories with your children? Yes, there's a body tree. And we got it in India. Uh, we had a conference in India. It's called Global Conference. And all the people who attended that conference, they gave them a body, a body tree. That body tree came from India and we planted it in Uganda here. So we do the rituals, of course, the Buddhist rituals. But as for us, uh, Jataka stories, we have not started. But uh, we do Buddhist stories, uh, like uh, the Buddha story, how he was born, the Buddha to be. And they love it. The children love it. Eh? Uh, Kisa Gotami story. And actually, uh, we, uh, some of the videos I got them from Malaysia. When I, I was in Malaysia, I got so many videos for for teaching the children uh, CDs. So we started like the, the stories, cartoons, and all these things. But we have not really started the, all the Jataka stories uh, as a book. But we have stories being encapsulated in a in a teaching like a Sigalovada Sutta. Like last time when I was in Malaysia, there's a thing for Kwansan, They produced a Sigalovada Sutta video. I mean cartoons. That one we show them. Uh, Buddha stories and all these things. Uh, but uh, yeah, the children they get inspired. I tell you, on every Sunday, we have so many children coming and listen to them. Yes, we have started some stories, but those, those cities I got from Malaysia. Mm. Rituals, I don't do so much rituals. Uh, uh, but uh, the thing that, uh, how I reconnect the Africans with Buddhism is to make sure that I teach them in what to call African proverbs. African proverbs, they are the ones who are holding our wisdom, African wisdom. 
So, like, if I teach uh, the teaching on love karma, I would just first say it in African language, and also its African implications, and then they, I shift them to, uh, to the, the Buddhist teaching. So then I, I reconnect. What I'm doing is exactly what the Buddha did. When you go to Dhammapada, the whole Dhamma is called Brahman Brahman Vaga, eh? the, the last chapter. It's like actually Brahminist terms, but interpreted by the Buddha. So in other words, I use a lot of that African way of thinking, interpreted in a Buddhist way. So then, then people get, uh, they, they see that the teaching is landing somewhere. It's not something foreign. Yeah, so that's how I connect. Actually, most of the time, what I do to connect our Buddhist culture and Buddhism. What I do to connect our Buddhism. Yes. Yes, Bante. Another Bante. Question? Yeah, Bante, the greatest challenge we have in Malaysia, I think, is uh, getting the people to become monks. Mm. How do you do that in, in Uganda? Ah, now, now, you see, in, in, how I do it also probably my biggest challenge, but I think for me, what I do is not so much getting the people to become monks, is convince their parents because the parents are the ones who produce the children. So if you can really convince the parents <laughs> of the Dharma teaching and its benefit, they would wish their children to gain the same, but you have to start when they are very early. Don't start with the parents who have about a child who is about uh, difficult. You can start with that. Start with the parents also who have children who are young inspire them how this teaching is good for for the not only this life but for the next life because most of the people don't know that then make sure that the the parents see the juicy part of buddhism the juicy part the inspiration and once the parent is convinced the parents are the one who tell the children yeah, you go to the temple you know go to the uh, go to the temple that's what i do but i think uh, Dr. Victor v is more experienced in that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but for me, I just feel that uh, because I think African context might be different from Malaysia context. Yes. Because I, when I was in Sri Lanka for five years, yeah, Sri Lanka, I thought that every parent will send their children to become monks. This is always the attachment to the children. So it's not easy anywhere, actually. It's not easy anywhere. It's not easy even in Uganda. But our job is to make sure that you inspire the parents. Once you inspire the parents, you get their children to become novices. And you have to start at no novice stage when they're still young, <laughs> before there are they're, they're, they're so many ideas. So then when the, the parents say, wow, wow this dam is good, they, they will say, oh, I like my children to gain the same benefit. That's how I do it. I don't know another thing. Once the children come to the temple and become novice monks, they inspire others. <laughs> they inspire others. Anyway, there's overall inspiration that I did share with you actually during my, my talk. The, the overall inspiration that I use in Africa is like this. I wrote it in, also in, 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 for this Saturday, uh, United Nations this Saturday. But I didn't share with you this time. But so this is how I do to inspire people. First, in Africa, first, do what people can see by their eyes. Right? Whatever you can do to the Dharma to be visible to them. Right? Then the next, go to the ears. Make sure that what you teach, uh, it's very pleasant to their ears. And then finally, bring to the heart. But if you start with the heart and the ears and the eyes, no, it doesn't work in Africa. So in other words, that's why this problem that I have, people can see it by their eyes. In other words, you teach by precept and example. What people can see. That's what the Buddha said, teach by precept and example. So once you, people learn your next example, to, then people can see that with their eyes. Then uh, find the Buddha's teaching, which is 
to listen more. I remember when I was teaching nuns, they kept on saying, no, please continue, continue, continue. So now you teach something like lively today, something relevant to the people's experience. Eh? Not uh, 100 years ago, no, no. What's current? How we can deal with the current? So that's what I would do if I want to attract more, more um, novice monks. But there was the average age of your gift. What's the average age of your monks uh, since you say they are very young? What? How old are your monks? How young? Young, we have uh, one who's nine. Wow. Uh, nine who's trained to be an Angelica is nine. But actually what we want to do is once someone is 12 years better. So, but we, we, we push the age if, if they come from the village, from the village. Uh, because their parents are very close. But we, we get those who are coming far, we don't want somebody who's eight years, nine years, ten. We want somebody 12 at least, if you don't come from the community. But once you come from the community, uh, we can, it's easy just walking to the village and say your children are this and this and that. <laughs> yeah, so we are flexible about the age, but I can say uh, nine, eight, nine years average, but we set the limit that we don't want somebody who's three actually we have a little one we have a little one who's about four years but because the parent was convinced of the dharma and then this for a few days because it's too young <laughs> during may i'm going to tell him just for, for a week like that because it's only four years old because the parent is also one to dead so they come with the children So the youngest ones, so what to say, and the average is nine, and the oldest is seventeen. The oldest one is seventeen. Yes. Bante, there's question? a <laughs> Bante, there's a question about the peace school in UBC with the global pandemic. Yes. Do the school and activities in UBC get affected? Yes, they are affected. So we stopped that school. We stopped that school, but uh, then the government of... Uh, of course, when we stopped it, we continued paying the teachers for three months. And uh, after that, we closed completely. And now the government announced that there's no opening the school. Uh, so we don't know when they're going to reopen. Yes, So, but once it reopens, uh, we resume the classes, and now we, we invite in the, the baby class because we have baby, baby class and middle. So that now we they have to go and do, and then we admit one batch. So the total number of students in our school should be 36. 12 each class, 12, 12, 12. So there's something about 12. <laughs> 12, 12. <laughs> <That's in. laughs> Bante, Bante, there's a greeting from you from Hawaii, for you from Hawaii. Bante Sumana Atale. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I've been to Hawaii before and I taught there, but uh, yeah. So send my greetings, please. <laughs> yes, I greet you from Uganda. <laughs> But you all welcome to Uganda. Thank you, Bante. Uh, these are all the questions we have tonight. And uh, we'll end with a short sharing of marriage. So, Bante, maybe. yeah. After the. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, it. Uh, Bobby, if Sorry? I could just say something. Uh, yes. Bante, after the call, we would like. I, I can't hear you. Here. And the one. Sorry? that Sorry? you're having. And, uh, Sorry? I can't hear uh, you clearly. Bante, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Oh. After the COVID is over, yes. I think we'd like to organize a trip to Uganda to, to visit you. Yes, you are we'd welcome. Like to do that, you know, after the COVID is over. 
after the pandemic you're welcome. is over. Yes, <laughs> because I think you're doing a fantastic mission there. And we. My answer to that is you are welcome uh, to come to Uganda. You have open invitation. You have open invitation. I can say <laughs> you invitation. <laughs> The open invitation. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> after COVID, but nation. After after COVID, Bante. After COVID. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Mm. Any other question? Ah. Uh, no, I think that's the last question we have. Yeah, that, that was, Yeah. Yes, that's the last. Ask this question. How do you make donations? No, no. There's someone who asks a question. B yeah. How do you make donations? Yes. How to make Make a donation to your center. Somebody asked this question. I think yeah. you can answer that question. Yeah, I see it okay. in your chat. Okay, we'll we'll post it in the in the BGI Facebook later. Yes. Yeah, and we'll put it in the YouTube also. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Yes, I would share the marriage. Eh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, with all. Uh, Give Dharma talk, all the Dharma work you are doing in Malaysia. I know you are doing great work in Malaysia. And you know, what you are doing to all beings, may all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May all the way that accrues from our practices, our Dharma work, benefit all beings. May all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May you all beings, all sentient beings, share in our marriage. May all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. May you attain nibbana. I'm going to do some Pali chanting. Then, uh, also reflect along with Nata. Ida me nyatina ho tu sukita ho tu nyatayo nyatayo sabiti yo vajan tu sabaro go vinasa tu mati va wantanta ra yo sukiti gai ko va chata ro dama wantante aywa no sukambala bot sabamanga ra kantu sabade vata sababu dan bave na sabada man bave na sabasanga bave na sache kananche ambaram. Arahantanjati Jenara Kambanda Misabaso Orahans. May you be well and peaceful. May you be free from suffering and its causes. You say sadu, sadu, sadu. Okay. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Bhante, for the wonderful sharing. Uh, we yeah. will we will end the the I mean, kindly remain on the Zoom for a while while we finish the yes. talk. Yeah. Yes.